welcome to our third chapter which is future tense and in this video um, in the next 40 minute session we will be covering the topic of future tense so the first video is specifically based on discussing the usage and structure of future indefinite tense let's look at the content of the overall chapter uh, we'll be discussing future indefinite tense along with its usage and structure then we'll be moving on to discussing future continuous tense along with its usage and structure again then future perfect tense and future perfect continuous tense the learning outcome of the first subtopic is that by the end of the session the students will be able to understand the usage and the structure of future indefinite tense okay so uh, first of all the very basic usage of uh, future tense is that we use this tense uh, with uh, with the help uh, by using the word the auxiliary uh, will to predict the future and it is the basic way we talk about the future in english so this is a very general way or this is the most common way of uh, using future tense in english uh, of you know talking about future events of you predicting future in english language and we can use it for future facts and for things that are less certain for instance the sun will rise at 7 am so we are predicting like according to the um, uh, you know the time of the year uh, we are predicting that will probably rise at uh, will probably ha have sunrise at around 7 am um i think uh the right wing party will win the next election now here again uh based on some kind of you know uh, information or knowledge or the current information we are predicting that probably the next election will be won by the right wing party uh another usage of future indefinite tense is that uh it's used uh, for uh, you know uh, referring to promises or requests or refusal or offer and this is also called volitional will um and it's about wanting to do something um or not wanting to do something so whether you want or not and what do you plan to do uh so let's look at uh, an example i'll help you with your homework so simply you are telling that okay um, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow whatever but i'll help you uh, with your homework which means i'm willing to help you in your homework another example will you join me for the session now this is an interrogative sentence and in this you are inquiring about somebody else's uh, you know plan or intention whether they intend to join you for the session or not okay i will not go simply denying a negative sentence uh, in expressing your intention or plan of not going somewhere um okay uh, another usage of future indefinite tense is that we often use will when we are talking about a decision at the moment of speaking now what do i mean by that Uh, we are usually making an offer or promise or talking about something that we actually want to do um so for instance um i am cold and another person one person says i am cold and um, uh, so the moment you are saying i am cold you are expecting the other person to do something about it and the second person says okay i will close the window so the moment you are saying it i will close the window you are actually closing it you are not you know saying that you'll close the window tomorrow or you know you're just doing it and um, so this is also this is how also future tense is used that you are actually doing something at the moment of speaking about it okay um we also use uh, the simple future with will in the first conditional and in other sentences that have a conditional feeling in the last couple of uh, you know um videos we have had referred to a conditional sentence also in the second chapter the chapter on past tenses we have referred how past perfect is used in a conditional clause similarly future indefinite uh, tense is also used with first conditional for instance if it doesn't rain we'll go to the park this is probably the first conditional it refers to uh, your intention of doing something the possibility of doing something so the first the if clause the conditional clause is normally in 
uh, is in present form, present tense, uh, simple present tense, and what you plan to do is in future is in in the simple future sentence structure. So you're saying there is a condition that if it doesn't rain, we'll go to the park. So you intend to go to the park in case it does not rain today. Okay, let's arrive early. Uh, that will give us time to relax. So, you know, if we arrive early, we'll have enough time to relax. Again, a condition and then uh, the main clause. Okay, now shell is also very commonly used in future tense. You might have this question that, you know, uh, it's a little bit confusing. When should I use shell? Or when should I use will? So, shell is mainly used, um, uh, in, is used mainly in the form shall I or shall be. You know, a sort of, you know, more polite. Um, these forms are used when you want to get someone's opinion, especially for offers and the, their suggestions. Um, okay. Shall I open the window? Uh, now, do you want me to open the window? So you're seeking suggestion. You're asking for their opinion, if they want you to do it or not. Um, another uh, example, where shall we go? Uh, tonight for dinner. Now, what's your opinion? Would you like to suggest a place? So, this is how you use shell. Now, be going to is also a very common uh, way of talking about uh, future intentions or plans. And uh, we have uh, actually made our plans before we are uh, before the moment moment of speaking. For instance. Uh, one person, the first person says, we have run out of milk. And the second person says, I know. I am going to buy some. So I am going to, though it, there is no will in this sentence, but this is, a few, this is one way of referring to a future activity or a future intention or a future plan. So the moment you are saying it, you have already planned to do so. Okay. Um, we can also use be going to to make a prediction about the future. Um, often it's possible to use both be going to and will, but it's co more common to use be going to if we can see evidence in the past, uh, in the present. So based on some, so, uh, some sort of available uh, evidence, we are predicting something that will be happening in future. For instance, look at those boys playing football. They are going to break the window. Now, you know, by, just by the looking at the way they are playing, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the way they are hitting the ball, we are predicting that this is going to happen. So instead of will, in such scenario, we most commonly use going. Uh, the sky is getting darker and darker. It's going to rain. Again, instead of will, you use going to. Now, let's quickly go through the structure. The structure of future indefinite tense is uh, you know, comparatively very simple for affirmative sentences, subject, either shall or will, and the base form of the verb, uh, which means uh, probably the first form of the verb, um, I shall go to the college, negative, I shall not go to, the, to college to, today, and um, let's look at the interrogative sentences. Again, and now here we all know that we when, when we are forming questions, uh, the auxiliary verb comes at the beginning of the sentence. This is something that we have uh, been discussing for uh, the last two chapters as well. The placement of auxiliary verb, the placement of subject, and the placement of the main verb. So it's very important to be aware of the correct placement of each word in a sentence. So will you go to college? So you see the structure of future indefinite tense is pretty simple. Um, uh, it's uh, the subject will or shall depending again on the context and then comes the main verb. So I hope that uh, by the end of the first, um, uh, first video on future tense, you are now quite familiar with uh, the context in which we'll probably use future indefinite structure uh, and um, in which situation do we use it. Um, and uh, also um, uh, the difference between shell and will, when is it more appropriate to use shell as compared to will, when, when do we use that will actually. And then we have also discussed about the structure uh, incorporating the phrase be going to, what does it mean, in which scenario is it, it is more preferred over will. So I hope by the end, and also then we have discussed the structure of future indefinite tense, how to form affirmative sentences, negative sentences, and interrogative sentences. So I hope the structure 
and the usage of future indefinite tense is quite clear by now. Thank you. See you in the next video.